Hello students, welcome back to 60. Hello students, welcome back to 60 out of 60 in Keset Chemistry 2025 series in just 200 days. So students, uh, like many of you have been asking that organic chemistry is very difficult, those who are in PU2. So that is because your basics, your fundamentals are not clear from PU1. So if you are someone like that, then this series is going to be very, very useful, very, very helpful for you because we are going to start today GOC or some basic uh, like basic principles of organic chemistry today we are going to discuss that so those students who are having fundamentals whose fundamentals regarding the organic chemistry is not very clear so they will definitely face the difficulty so it is very very important to clear these concepts so please watch this video full this series will be almost seven to eight videos on this chapter we'll be doing okay and each and every video is very very important today we'll be just doing the introduction part where we'll be discussing structural representation classification and functional group okay so so you can see i have made it in part seven okay so in the first part we'll be discussing structural representation okay structural representation classification and functional group next very important we'll understand nomenclature isomerism reaction mechanism purification qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis okay so today's class is these topics so i'll today's topic is very simple not so this is the weightage you can see though the weightage directly from this chapter is very less but it has very very important applications in the pu2 chapters so that is why this chapter is very important okay so here students i want to tell you about the pu2 success blueprint test series so as of as a uh, you know your PU2 exams are very very near so if you want to get 95% and above then this test series will definitely help you so it is launched by Diksha which has 12 tests there are 4 part tests and 8 full length papers and the question papers are designed according to the lattice pattern and syllabus and apart from this you will also be getting one shot revision videos detailed video solutions and doubt clarification classes will also be there right and this all things you can avail at a discounted price of 5 99 rupees only so students if you are someone who is expecting or who wants to get 95 percent or above please do not miss this opportunity go to the description uh, section the test link uh, registration link is there click on this buy the test series as soon as possible because the first test of the test series will be on 15th of december okay so please go ahead and buy it as soon as possible fine so today's class we are going to discuss these things so under structural representation we have complete condensed and bond line formula okay so we'll be discussing that first now how do we represent so we know that carbon can form a different number of compounds because of its valency that is carbon has tetra valency and its scatenation property this we have studied in class 10th right so carbon has the ability to form long chains and carbon has the ability to form more like four bonds okay so that is now so complete formula means when and you should remember one very important thing here that every carbon can form only four bonds okay so now you see suppose carbon is forming here bonds with hydrogen so you can see this carbon one two three four five six seven right so this carbon is having four bond this carbon is also having four bond so when you are representing the all the bonds of carbon it is called complete formula here you can see ch 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 double bond here you can see c triple bond c h h here you can see this one is there and here you can see when you represent all the bonds that is called complete formula now what is condensed formula condensed formula means you just represent you do not represent all the bonds okay any just you represent carbon carbon bond this is also a type of condensed formula where we have represent only carbon carbon bond carbon hydrogen bond is not represented here we have not represented any bond we have just written the formula that is also condensed formula okay now you can see for example ethane we have drawn like this this is complete formula but if i write c3h and then c3h okay ch3 ch3 that is the condensed formula next if i write ethene this is ch2 i have shown double bond here and then again ch2 that is ethene now if i want to show ethene you can see ch bond is not shown here that is condensed formula here if you see i have just written ch3oh no bond is shown that is also condensed formula okay now coming to bond line formula so if you are just 
writing the bond line only the carbon carbon bond is represented right so you can see like this means carbon carbon bond is represented hydrogens are not represented at all so these type of structures are called as bond line formula so for example here you can see we have carbon carbon bonds shown so this is a condensed formula but then if you want to convert it into bond line no element should be written that is bond line formula similarly here you can see like no element means in the bond line formula there should be no carbon written other elements has to be written okay carbon and hydrogen is not to be written next if you see here it is also like this bond line formula is there and to this carbon chlorine is attached so that is there okay so now next we have 3d representation of carbon so carbon has four bonds okay so these four bonds like two bonds are in one plane one of the bond is towards you and one of the bond is away from you so that is how it is represented this dash line okay sorry this wedge line this is called as bond towards the observer means if i am observing from here this bond is like this towards me now dash or wedge bond away from the observer so if you have dash line this line so this bond is going inside the blackboard means inside the board this bond is going it is away from me and these two bonds are in the plane of the board okay so just imagine like this this bond is coming out okay and one bond is going inside and two bonds are in the plane okay so that is the 3d representation of carbon compounds clear next we will talk about classification so carbon compounds are classified based on first that is acyclic compounds and cyclic compounds acyclic compounds means which does not have any cyclic structure cyclic compounds as you all know has some cyclic structure now in this cyclic structure that is alicyclic compounds and aromatic compounds in alicyclic it is in alicyclic it has homocyclic and heterocyclic we will give you examples it will be clear now in aromatic we have benzenoid non benzenoid and heterocyclic aromatic compounds okay let's see the example for that first one is acyclic means there is no cyclic structure these all are open chain structures you can see there is no ring like formula or ring like structure so that is called acyclic structures now under cyclic the first one was alicyclic and another one was aromatic right so alicyclic if you see under alicyclic also we have two categories homocyclic and heterocyclic so alicyclic means any cyclic structure means it should be a closed figure okay so now you can see this is alicyclic this is a closed figure this is also a closed figure this is also a closed figure now homocyclic means if all the atoms are carbon okay then it is called homocyclic and you know in bond line formula we represent so actually this is what ch2 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 right similarly here it is ch2 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 so these type of structures where the all the bonds are between carbon it is called homocyclic okay now heterocyclic means you have one extra atom okay so there is this all are carbon this is carbon this is carbon this is carbon but this is oxygen right so these heterocyclic bonds if there is any other any hetero atom is present then it is called heterocyclic okay but it is a part of alicyclic okay now coming to aromatic compounds aromatic compounds should have there are some reasons there are some criteria for aromatic compounds the first one is it should have sp2 hybridization okay so if it has sp2 hybridization then it is planar okay next if it is planar that is there sp2 hybridization planar molecule uh, then we have the next one is it should have 4n plus 2 pi electrons okay and next one is it should be cyclic okay so you can see here all the carbons are sp2 hybridized it is a cyclic structure and if you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six electrons so i can write it like this is it in the formula of 4n plus 2 rule right 4n plus 2 rule is there so definitely this compound is an aromatic compound 
okay now if this structure is present then it is called benzenoids okay so you can see these are this is this structure is there on that structure some extra is added so that is also an aromatic compound and it is also a benzenoid aromatic compound this structure is called as benzene so if in the compound this structure is there then it is called benzenoid structure okay so here you can see this is also two benzenoid structures are there so that is naphthalene okay next coming to non benzenoid structures so in benzenoid what you see there are six carbons but here you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this is also aromatic okay but this is not benzenoid because it is not having six carbons right so this compound can be called as a non benzenoid aromatic structure okay clear next coming to heterocyclic okay so these all are non benzenoids okay but this is benzenoid this is non benzenoid so heterocyclic means if you have some other hetero atom so o is there s is there n is there these all are heterocyclic compounds clear okay so structure is clear let us revise once again so we have first is acyclic and cyclic okay now in cyclic we have alicyclic okay and aromatic now in a alicyclic we have two things one is homocyclic okay and another is heterocyclic in aromatic okay uh, aromatic we have three types one is uh, benzenoid okay next non benzenoid please remember the examples this is very important and then is heterocyclic okay clear now coming to something called as functional group this is also very very important so functional group is an atom or a group of atoms joined to the carbon chain which is responsible for the characteristics or chemical properties of the organic compound so to the carbon chain to the carbon compound if some group is attached which decides the chemical properties of the compound I mean suppose this was a compound okay of carbon now here when group is attached and this group changes the chemical properties of this particular compound then we can say that this group is functional group okay so functional group can be one single atom it can be a group of atom okay joined to the carbon chain which is responsible for the characteristic chemical properties of the organic compounds the examples of this like you have hydroxyl group that is oh group aldehyde group cho and carboxylic acid group okay next something called as homologous series okay so let us understand what is homologous series so a group or a series of organic compounds each containing a characteristic functional group forms a homologous series and the members of the series are called homologs i'll give you an example and here one important point is there they the members of homologous series okay the members of homologous series differ by ch2 group okay now i'll explain this what is homologous series okay so homologous series the first thing is they should have the same functional group. so it is a series or it is a family the members of this family or series should have the same functional group okay so for example i'll take first three carbon ch3 oh okay next member will be just you have to add one ch2 group so it will become ch3 ch2 oh next you have to add another ch2 group right so these if you continue like this this family this series is called as one type of homologous series i can give you example of another homologous series suppose ch3 cl then i will write ch3 ch2 cl then ch3 ch2 ch2 cl 
right it can continue so you can see between these two members there is a gap of ch2 between these two there is one gap of ch2 right so these type of series are called as homologous series and they have similar chemical properties okay so what is important about them they have similar chemical properties okay clear fine okay so students as i already told you the success pu2 success blueprint test series is there you can avail it at this price of discounted price of 599 so please if you are interested go to the registration section sorry description section link is there click on it and buy the test series okay this will be really really helpful for your preparation okay fine so yes students that's all in this lecture so it was a very small and introduction video for this particular chapter next class we are going to practice nomenclature then we'll be doing isomerism so many many important concepts are going to be discussed in this series so if you are someone who finds difficult organic chemistry then please please continue watch like continue to watch this series your all doubts will be cleared i can guarantee you that okay so yes students let's get start like see you in the next class and thank you for watching do not forget to subscribe the channel